Hi right, guys, is the expat community in the Philippines worth knowing? First thing I want to say is not everybody is the same. And one of the things I did notice over the time I was in the Philippines is this is about the amount of people that most people will find is their group. Like anywhere in the world. These other ones you probably ain't going to want to mix with. you got predators, criminals, um, people that just don't sit in your normal demographic. There is nothing wrong with that. That is just normal society. <laughs> That's how society functions. Just because you're a foreigner in a foreign land doesn't mean you're friends with everybody. So one of the things I will stress on this is please do not assume that because you're not friends with somebody it's something personal. It's just that just because you're, you've got a passport and they've got a passport does not make you friends. Um, in the same way when that 70 year old guy sat down next to me in McDonald's and he's talking about meeting these 18, 19 year old girls in Talise and this and that. For me, he was just a dirty old pervert. That's it. I don't agree with guys that are meeting these young girls um, at all. Um, the reason being is these are young girls. Mentally, in the Philippines, a lot of these girls, their mindset is much younger. And it's not hard to find an 18, 19 year old with the mindset of a 13 year old. Because a lot of the time, they haven't matured at the same level. So as such, they're, to me, they're still kids. So, no, it's not normal. And no, I wouldn't find him a friend. In fact, he was just weird. Um, he was a dirty old man. He tried to show my wife a magic trick. My wife just looked at him like an idiot. Because she'd gone to Gasano, then come back while this guy was sat there. And she just thought, what a weird, dirty old man. But anyway, you're not going to get on with everybody. Now, the stuff online, be aware that is not the way a lot of the expat community is. Because you've got to understand a lot of these people hide behind pseudonyms and have egotistical issues. In the real world, people are often very, very different. Because they can get a punch in the face. So their abusive comments online are not matched by what they do in person because often they know they can't do that. What they rely on online is being able to hide. This is why uh, recently when people started putting uh, information relating to people's pseudonyms, the people didn't like it because it starts to unravel their realities because they like to be able to be abusive and say your life is like this or whatever. What they don't like is when you go, let's have a look at you. They hate that. So bear, bear that in mind. A lot of the time I wouldn't say engage too much online or see that as the way all expats are. Because predominantly it's not. You will find that you'll get on with this amount, but you won't get on around with this amount. The reason being is... Like anywhere in the world, you have your own demographic. For example, if you're into scuba diving, you're more likely to get on with people who do scuba diving. If you're a capitalist, you're not going to get on with socialists in many ways. <clears throat> in fact, talking to socialists, there's a few socialists I know that have a very distorted view on the planet. And, and they're very proactive. It's funny because they have their little Facebook groups and stuff as well. Um, they'll actually target immigration groups and stuff to stop people being able to actually talk about things that it's common sense. You know, like being able to say, we can't have mass immigration without screening for diseases, their criminal history, and you know, just basic stuff. But instead they'll actually try and shut those other groups down and progressively work as a group to do it. Because their only agenda is their agenda, and that's it. Some of those people you will come across in the Philippines because their viewpoint is so narrow that they will actually target other people just simply because it doesn't fit what they want. Um, just recognize that. Just avoid them if you want or become part of their little clique um, of distorted views on the world. Up to you. One thing I will say though is recognize that the world is much bigger than you see on YouTube. A lot of the best people I know do not use YouTube at all. Uh, well, in fact, they don't use forums. I remember some of the guys engaging on forums back in 2007, um, <clears throat> getting shot down by village idiots because they're trying to talk about specific topics, could be goat breeding, chickens, whatever. But you get the idiots on the forums just trying to stir things up to the point they just say, you know what, 
I'm dealing with a bunch of morons. There's no point actually trying to engage on something above their IQ level. So they just don't bother. And I know that IQ level may hit a raw mark with some people, but the point is it's not, well. For somebody to be self-destructive and destructive to others, I'd have to question their actual mentality. Because I do know some of these people go online with the viewpoint of being destructive and nothing else. Um, for me, they're just idiots. Because at the end of the day, the expat community could be so much better if people actually were working together and actually tried to steer in the right direction. <clears throat> Best hotels in certain areas, um, contacts for accommodation, Places to eat. Where's the best places to eat? It's promoting expat bars, promoting expat, expat restaurants, bed, bed rentals, businesses, whatever. But instead, it's often drag everything down with crab mentality. Um, at the same time, now on the positive spin, you will find that you will make some lifelong friends. You'll also have memories of those people you wish never meet again. But I find that a lot of the people I've met overseas, I've kept friends for some of them over 20 years now. Um, and they're good friends at the end of the day. I mean, it's like with Kento, I've said, Kento, you can come and crash at our place here in Spain. Because that's what friends do. You know, that's what a, a good friend is. If you offer that friendship in the same way when they're looking for work, if I've got something, I send it to them. A couple of the guys went out to the Middle East with me. In the same way, when the NHS stuff come up, John Parrish, for example, does similar work. So I got him on the same contract. I sent, you know, put his name forward and they engaged and he got some work out of it. That's the positive side. When people work together. One of the things I was trying to do when I was in the Philippines was get people to work as a cooperative. Um, because many people have restaurants, many people need things like if you have a bar, aren't alcohol could be an issue to source the right stuff, etc. But as a cooperative, you can bulk buy. You know, at the end of the day, um, for example, rice. One of my wife's uncles in rice in a big way in the Philippines. They buy it as a cartel. They don't buy like. X amount, they'll buy a lot in one go. I mean, he has about 11 containers a week, I think, of rice. But the point being is, they buy as a group. They don't go in there with a few million pesos. I think they buy something like one or two billion pesos a month between the cartel. It's a group. Um, we call it cooperative, but they're in there it's a cartel because there's a bit more control over it. Um, but the point being is for alcohol, when you want certain things, you can do it as a group. In the same way, if you find a good way of getting something to the Philippines, sharing that information could be useful as well, same as the exports. If you have somebody that's good at exporting things like nipper huts, which are easy to rent, uh, sell in certain parts of the country, uh, certain parts of the world, then it's worth doing. Also, what treatments you use for it. Because not everybody can make their business big enough. And this is one of the things that I think a lot of people don't seem to understand. Your business is this size in the Philippines. It's this size. The market in the world is like this. So if you're in Cebu City running a business, a bakery, for example, and you've got certain things that you buy and need and some stuff you can't source, somebody up on Luzon doing a very similar business model may have half the stuff you're looking for already but they may also have other stuff that you haven't even thought of and working together you can help each other and you can progress both businesses but also if you start seeing um, an opportunity there for example a lot of the uh, Lichon um, Baboy goes from Cebu up to Manila they actually fly them up for, for birthdays and stuff, a lot of stuff people aren't aware of. There is a lot of opportunity out there if people work together. And I, I think a lot of people miss those opportunities because of the way a lot of the expat community is, because people will argue rather than try and 
find resolutions or try and work together or find something that you both need or maybe there's a supplier you can buy together and reduce both your costs or in fact 20 businesses that can all operate together. The whole point is there is opportunities there and I do think one of the main issues is that a lot of the expats are just there for retirement so they're not interested which is fine but they shouldn't interfere in other people that are trying to do business and uh, that's one of the things I will say I do get is a lot of people that are interested in business contact me directly and yet I have never seen them engage even on the comments section or even in the forums or anything else in the past they've contacted directly because I talk about business stuff in the same way they're interested in developing businesses as well so from that point of view there is opportunities there so I mean if you are interested in business one of the things I do recommend is actually promoting what you're interested in what you want to do but you don't have to go in detail and say right I'm buying this restaurant this is my recipes da 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 no you just turn around and say I'm gonna be set up a pizza restaurant barbecue station whatever um, and you may actually get some useful people come forward that will contact you directly anyway that's enough on this video, it's quite long enough, but the point being is there is good people out there. You will have to deal with a lot of the bad along the way, but that's part and parcel of the territory. You get a lot of bad elements come to the Philippines because they come out of prison or whatever, hop on the flight and go to, the, go to Asia. In the same way, it's, uh, they call Cambodia the last stop because a lot of people escaping from the other countries end up in Cambodia as well because, quite simply, they're bad elements. But the whole point being is just be aware that you will not find everybody to be your best friend and lifelong buddy. But the people that you do find that actually you get on with, you're very likely to have friends for life. Thanks for watching.